right. What's up? We're back again. Yes, sir. We're here. And it's just me and you today, man. That's it. <laughs> mano y mano. Yep. <laughs> Tom's busy screwing around over in Dubai. Dubai. Look at that. That's big dog stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Flying business first class. The guy had like a suite, dude, in yeah. an airplane. Yeah. I mean, I- I've flown first class back and forth to the trade shows, but that's that's living there. I mean, <laughs> wow. He's an official big dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's going to try to use our live link to call in. Okay. Um, but over there, the bandwidth is really sketchy. Right. You know, sometimes you can get in, sometimes you can't. It's, uh, he, he tried a few times and it was all banged up, mm-hmm. but I, I think we've got it now. I mean, you know, Jesus Christ, we're trying to do remote feed from Dubai. Right. I got <laughs> I mean, you. I got you. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a little slack here, guys. That ain't easy. <laughs> that ain't easy. What'd you do this week? Anything good? Or? Uh, just work and sleep. Um, I took a picture with uh, J.R. Smith from the, from the Cleveland Cavaliers. I uh, saw that. I saw yeah. it on the Facebook thing. Because now you guys have sucked me into this whole Facebook disaster. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, not really. I no. mean, it's I'm there yeah. and I'm watching. Oh, it won't take long. Uh, well, listen, you're not going to see my name. <laughs> like You're not going to see, quote unquote, my Facebook page. That okay. ain't not going to happen. All right. But Facebook is addictive, so I'll just let it weigh in on you. It's evil, dude. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <sighs> God. Take your time. Take Boy. your time. <laughs> All you friggin' Facebookers. <laughs> And, you know, now I've had some people reach me, uh, a guy that used to work uh, at the old shop. Um, he, he actually heard us in Florida. I don't yeah. know who I don't know who turned him on to it. Um, okay. He got a link somewhere, but he uh, he texted me this morning and he was involved with apparently some, you know, high speed stuff, like one mile stuff, things mm-hmm. like that. And okay. So that that's uh, that's interesting. He wants to come on. He says, Mike he says, you know, people are talking about it. Oh, so okay. that's that's good. That's what we want. We want that buzz. Well, I can tell you. This is this is going to be a little bit of hatred. I I know that's a shock coming Uh-oh. from me. Yeah, yeah. So, I I'm I'm there's something wrong with me. I look at everything all the time. Right. I always look at that. I always look at what's going on. Okay. And we have the host we use shows map, so you can see who's downloading where and why. So now keep in mind this went live approximately seven days ago, maybe eight days ago. Right. Is when we got the first one up. So I've been watching this spread on this map like like an outbreak you know like when you see like okay, they're, they're with little dots yeah little dots and then okay. it's getting more and more <laughs> and it was kind of funny because like oklahoma i was wondering what was going to happen down there because i mean i guess you know they show that they're big street race area right and i'm watching there and there's like five downloads in oklahoma i'm like what the f- five wow five <laughs> and then all of a sudden like two days later bam 600 oh okay yeah we've got yeah we've got you know it's not a thousand in every state but it's getting there. Good. And that's good. pretty good. That's what we want. With the exception of a couple states that are really far behind. Okay. And like go ahead. things like Montana. Right. Idaho. You know, three or four. Oh, wow. Um, Maine, of all things, I looked at that this morning, uh, two. <laughs> but there's, old two? there's only one state that has zero. Zero? Zero. As in none? None. Okay, I'm curious. Utah. You, they don't like us in Utah? I, I, do they have cars? I mean, I. Oh, they have to have cars in Utah. I have no idea, but that's. Where, where exactly is Utah on the map? <laughs> <laughs> Take me back to high school. With the, okay. Like it's if, in between what? Talk to me. Like if there's Washington, like all the way up right, right there. Right, right. Then you go down and to the right a little bit, there's Utah. Oh, they have cars. They, and they, they have some beautiful hot rods out there. They understand our language. I'm sure they do, but no, may, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I didn't piss off any Mormons, did I? <laughs> I don't, I don't you, think so. But Mike, you meant zero? Zero. No, not a download. No, I mean like dead damn zero. Nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. And mm, mm, mm. You, you know, how do you, how do you push that? You know, do, do you, do you hate on people from Utah and be like, listen, start listening. I mean, you can't, it, this has to grow. Right. right that, that's right. all it can do. I well, see. I don't know if anybody's really listening live yet. Um, I just kind of hit the button to, to see how this works. Uh, we're testing this. We're going to see how it works. If people listen live, great. If they don't, they don't. Um, but I do know that the phones are lit right. and, and we got somebody crunch on the phone right now that this is, this is one of your guys. You want to give him a little bit of introduction when I bring him in? Um, sure. All right. Hang on. Let me pull him in. Yo, man, what's up? You there? Hey, what's going on? What's up, man? <laughs> uh, nothing. This is uh rich, not so broke from uh smallblockposse.com. Gotcha. No, actually, and let me introduce you. You are the man right. of smallblockposse.com. You are the man that made it possible for smallblockposse.com. So let's not get it twisted, Rich. Not so broke. 
well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, uh, well, first let me say before anything, this is a great idea you guys got. I love it. I listen to it all the time when I'm driving in traffic, so it's awesome. Oh, okay. So thank you. Get bro. that out of the way. I think you guys. Uh, thank you. I think um, you keep it really true to the sport, and it's uh, it's awesome. We're we're trying, um, but you know you know what the real problem is is that I, I don't want to say we're going to run out of material because we're not because we're just we're we're idiots. You know we talk about cars. <laughs> we, you know, I mean there there's always going to be something going on, and between the people that are involved and, and Crunch and myself and Tom and you know Alan, depending on what his deal is next week. Um, <laughs> We um we think we could have a lot of interesting people on, and the reach is getting better. And, and places like your web resource, um, you know, that really helps. So we, look, we appreciate the listeners, and we appreciate everybody, you know, telling somebody else, you know, give these guys a shot and give it a listen. Right, right. So what started? Exactly. Sm- well, I don't, I don't ever think you'll run out of material. Car guys used to stand around for eight hours in the middle of the night <laughs> True. and talk about cars. True. So if you're a real car guy, we'll always listen. It yeah. never gets boring to them talking about car stuff. That's how I look at it. So. so tell us tell us how Small Block Posse got started. What what brought this? How did this come to be? Because most things like this start out as, uh, you know, you want to do something for your friends or people where they can talk or they can do whatever, and then it grows into something else. Well, actually, how uh, I think it started 2000. Well, you know, street racing, of course, you know, we, I don't do it anymore, but that's what we did. And, uh, you know, they, I guess the Internet started started really twi- you know turning up around then and uh we found like one little website where a bunch of guys out east in uh long island like suffolk were had a website so we went on there and we harassed them we got a couple races <laughs> and then you know uh you know credit to some credit to people wherever credit is due uh P- pd small block and i decided yo it was a good idea we should get our own website mm. and really put it out there for everybody to do it okay. and to see it and sign up and then we could bring all the racing together which is essentially what i think we did i you know i think we got the uh oh, most definitely i think i accomplished it because you know years a couple years later crunch came on and it's, i think his first post was looking for money run and i was like oh look who's this guy crunch and then i <laughs> then i heard through all the through the grapevine that he was the guy that had that like twenty thousand dollar race you know over by the jail i said oh i know this guy <laughs> so i mean that that's you know i think we accomplished it yeah so. yeah no and i mean i i've been there and i frequented it you know, from time to time, um, I shouldn't say frequent in time to time, but like before this got started, I would wander around over there. And I think, didn't I, didn't I reach out to you when I was looking to get in touch with Crunch? Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. He's, he's the guy that got me your yeah. number, Crunch, because I couldn't find your phone number anywhere. Yeah. Like nowhere. Wow. You got to make yourself a little more accessible, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Rich, I just want to. make yourself more accessible, everybody harasses him. He's <laughs> himself too accessible. True indeed. Well, Rich. He's doing something right. They either love him or they hate him. And I always say, you're doing something right if, you, if that's the way it is. It's, uh, right. It works good for him, you know. But well, if you had his number out there, they, man, everybody would harass him. <laughs> well, Rich, Rich, I have to give you credit for the site because the site was already jumping before I got on it and it gave me an avenue just to talk and be myself and you never really you know reprimanded me and told me anything and you always supported me and then you saw me with my my small block posse.com sticker on my dually and I'm gonna always have my 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 stickers on anything I'm driving so everywhere I go that sticker is on something I'm driving and it's nice because when you go there you you can actually watch races getting locked up you right. can actually see some of the negotiation right, going back right, and right, forth and right. and it actually go, ties back to what we talked about that there's so much more to this as far as all the stipulations of race than just right. saying okay we're gonna go race for this much money true indeed true indeed so rich tell us um tell us what you got going on for 2015. Uh, 2015, I, you know, I, I, Crunch, you know, I took a little time off, kids, you know, family. Um, yeah. Life, life. I got back out a little last year. I do a lot of class racing now. Mm-hmm. Um, I do Ultra Street, and uh, I'm going to stick with that. I got a few grudge cars coming out now. Right. Uh, I think two years ago, we had crashed our grudge car to track. Right, And right, um, right. we're All bringing right. it back out, Frenchie, our car. Right. And that'll be back out, another stock block car, hopefully by, you know, September. And, you know, a few other people. I work on a lot of cars, you know. I'm, I don't advertise. You know that? Right. You know, it's a grudge thing. I don't, people don't say, oh, Richie works on my car. It's not, it's not something so. But I have a lot of stuff. I'll have my hands on a lot of stuff, and I'll be standing there a lot this year. No problem, no problem. So, well, good luck I with that. To, uh, yeah, safe racing and good luck, man, because you, you're the man now. You're behind the scenes, but you, you have your hands on some serious horsepower. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun this year. We, we you know, we, we I want to, you know, I want to, I wanted to bring back like the No Time Nationals this year, right. but um, you know, it's just it's a lot to bring that stuff back, and I feel like it lost a lot of its um, 
it's excitement. It's glamour from what we were doing. It, you know, I didn't do it. We didn't set it, start it up. Uh, Joe and I to be famous. You know, we started right. it up, or to make money. We did it for free. We didn't right. make any money. We just raised money, right. pi- uh, payouts, and you know, and you. I remember. And, I was uh, promote. Yeah, I was promoting it all around. You know, heavy in the grudge scene brought the cars, and it was a great. It was a great idea. I just don't think. I think it's diluted now, and I don't yeah. think we can get it to where we had it once before. Right. Well, you came up. You came up with that idea on the internet and you spoke on it and you made it come true for us so that that was a big thing you did you you and mouth you guys put together something really special and we'll never forget that as car guys never and yeah no, any, I, I loved it I, <laughs> and anybody listening I mean, you know I, if you love doing it i would do it again i just it's I, again i don't say i think a lot of people it's a lot you know i look down south everybody's got a grudge event listen everybody's allowed to make money <laughs> but i'm i'm a true i'm like uh I'm a purist. I, right, I, no, right. I didn't start the website to make money. Right. I didn't start and no and no time nationals to make money. I don't take videos to make money. Right. Right. I just wanted to do stuff for the love of the sport, for the love of grudge racing, the love of racing in general. And so the main I thing don't is think it's there anymore. Any, the any gets diluted out. Anybody that this is reaching, you know, go to smallblockposse.com and you get to see what's going on. You know, kind of yeah. a little more in this area. It's a little more northeast than, right. than anywhere else. But I mean, that's where you'll get you know, real discussion about, and you know, you'll learn the players. I've actually had to learn them over right, time. I've asked right. you a couple of things. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? True. True. You and know, when I first came on, they had, um, uh, on a budget, I, I forgot his full name, but on a budget had the white cutlass that was known all over for the class racing. He was doing it. He was John tough. Belinsky. John Belinsky. He was tough. He, and he's a good guy. He bought some, he, was, he bought uh, some gears from me. He bought some gears. Champion at one point. I mean, you know, tough. He was a tough guy. We were a tough guy. We, ra- we raced that car on the street. That was that another guy that started in the street and moved his way up and is doing better, bigger and better things now. Right, true, true. Okay. Now, where where do you fall on uh, where do you fall on the thing like uh, you know grudge racing versus street racing and and how about more than anything? I mean, you know, this is great and House of Grudge should listen to this because it, what do you think? You think that show is going to be worthwhile? You, you looking forward to it? I, I I look forward to the I look forward to uh, uh, that that grudge racing thing with Mike Marillo, right? Yeah, look forward to that. Um, I hope that that takes off and it keeps the same. I th- I hope the pattern that they're going to do is what is what we're expecting. You know, I've listened to you guys and I hope it it is like that. I don't know if it is or it isn't. You know, I don't I don't. I'd rather see it at the track. Personally, yeah. I think it it would be more entertaining for even for even um, an audience to be at the track than even on the street. I, that's just my opinion, though. Right. Okay. On the track, and it would be safer, more controlled, and I, I think that if they do this right, and look, we, we want to try to get somebody from House of Grudge to come on here, whether it be Mike himself or, or you know, Herring is the other guy, I guess. You know, we get one of those guys come on here and talk about it. I, I, I don't expect them to spill any secrets, <laughs> you know, to be like, <laughs> this is how the whole thing's going to work. But right. from watching, like, following Twitter posts and looking at stuff on Facebook, it looks like it's pretty legit. Uh, I, I think it might be pretty well, we, good. We have our fingers crossed because we need that. The real car guys and the guys that understand street racing and grudging for cash for money, we need to have an outlet that's re- reality for us. Yeah. You know, so we've done the pink well, I don't, thing. I don't, think, I, I don't think, it doesn't need to be scripted. It's, it's you know, it's comedy in itself 90% of the time, even right. the talking in the pits. True indeed. So I, I can't even, you don't need to script it. You just need to walk up to, the, to half the guys that are yelling at each other. And <laughs> you'll get something from, you know, from, right. you know, three hours of footage. You'll be able to fill a half hour pretty easy. True. Yep. True. Okay. Well, hey, Rich, thanks for calling us, man. We're going to jump onto this, uh, another caller, but I'm so happy that you called because, you gave me a platform to just be myself, and small block posse is in me. You understand what I'm saying? Yo, it's, a, it's for life. You're famous, man. I told you. Uh, <laughs> just famous. You've been, I don't even know how you got famous. You just yeah, I don't even um, know. <laughs> listen, you guys are great. Just you know, hang, don't hang up on me. I'm going to keep listening to the show. Okay, okay I'm, cool. I'm going to put oh, yeah. you on hold. But listen, thanks a lot, man, for calling. Thanks for helping promote this. You know, we, we want this. I mean, look, I, I don't know if this is ever going to make any money. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> this is like one of the other, you know, just like Small Block Posse. You're just doing it because we want to do it, and we want to want to try to entertain some people. So we'll see. All right, man. All thank right, you very you much. Have. You're on hold. All right, we have a caller here, 347, last four digits, 5810. Yep, let's see. I'm going to put them live. You're on, buddy. What's up? Yo, man, you there? Um, uh, yeah, this is a uh, crazy horse. I just called to listen on uh, listening. Oh, okay, that's Bin Laden, right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. He's, uh, he's a grudge racer from the Northeast with a lot on his mind. He has, um, you have an event coming up soon, right? June, July 11th, right? Yes, July 11th at Island Dragway. 
Island Dragway. Barbecue. Yeah, okay. Bill Grudging. Yeah, Still well, talking. congratulations. You won some money this uh, past weekend down in Fayetteville, right? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I, I got to ask, how much did you win? I, I had a great time. <laughs> yeah. extra money. I came home, paid, paid for the trip, and put some extra cash in my pocket. Oh, yeah. so it was a good win. It wasn't just a little money. Oh, it was yeah. all right. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, good. Okay. I had a great, it's, it's just a lot of shit, like, 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 like what you guys were saying just now with the with the talking and the comedy, it was just a con- like little comedy here and there. It was, right. it was good. A little entertainment it before you good. get to the action. And and props to your driver, Billy G. He he got it Thank in. You, sir. Yeah. That old man does his thing. <laughs> True indeed. Well, you have anything you want to say on the uh, on the air? You want us to uh any show ideas you have or do you like the show so far or what? Uh, I just called and so far what I hear it's not bad. I like it. All okay. right, man. I well, I should, I should have been calling. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hit up, hit up through. Go, go look at the archives because there's like this will be. This is actually show number eight. There's currently, I believe, six are put up there right now. There's mm-hmm. one from last week when Crunch was in Fayetteville, and what we did is we we put a bunch in the can. And matter of fact, the next guy who's calling is he, he called last week too. Oh yeah, um, Franco. That's yep, Franco. Yep, Crunch was away, and so I mean, probably what we're going to do is like over this weekend, we'll get caught up and we'll get current. So that like everything that's up, what the the plan is, is that when these are put down, what we want to do is we want to grab them and then post them like the next day. So, right, right. I mean, you know, when you talk about stuff as topical, you know, like, like your particular race or we talk about an event on a TV show, it doesn't do you much good if you hold them for three or four weeks. You, right, you I got you. Look. Kind of got to get them out there. Well, we, we, we're starting off. Yep. And Bin Laden, thanks for calling in, man. I appreciate it. We will promote your show. You hear me? Oh, thanks a lot, Crunch. Yes, thanks sir. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to try to get a race for yours. My car will be running and ready by then, so you know I'll be trying to do something. Why don't you why don't you plug your event before we let you go? Plug your event. All right, uh, July 11th. Okay, where is it going to be at? Island Dragway. Gates open at 9. Racing starts at 12. Mm-hmm. And it goes on to about 5, 6 o'clock. Just trying to help out a local track. And uh, we'll get some, have some fun and eat some good food there. <laughs> everybody, I tell you, everybody knows how much chicken comes out on the barbecue. Right, right, <laughs> very good. <laughs> and um, pretty much in a good time. I just, I just want to, I just want to get get people out there, get some racing going, right. get some cash, exchanges okay. here and there. Okay, have a good old time. All right, all right, man. We'll push for you. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that people people hear about it. All right, man. Thanks for calling. You want to go back on hold, or you want me to hang up? I'll hold you. Yeah, I want to listen on. All right. Hang out, man. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy. All right, bro. Good luck. Talk to you later. Later. All right. Now, the next caller. Oh, yeah. He, is, he, is he live yet? Yes, he is. Is that uh, Franco? This is the Ferris man in drag racing. <laughs> 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 What's up, man? It's, it's a privilege to have a big dog call in, you know? How you doing? Hey, Mike, how are you? Hey, how are you? It was so funny. Our day when, yeah. when Tom and I were first messing around and we were like trying to get everything ready. Cause a lot, a lot of people know that this was, uh, you know, the, the phone system is new, right? you know? So, um, I'm trying to learn it. It's a lot of technology. It's a little confusing because right, right. I'm trying to talk and be a board up. So if, <laughs> if somebody hears me talk and then stop, like, right, don't right. think I had a seizure or something. I, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to keep everything flowing. <laughs> right. So, um, and we're sitting here, Tom and I are, talking about whatever he was bitching about not being able to wind his watch or something and mm-hmm. i look up and i'm like son of a bitch i was like i know who that is <laughs> <laughs> that was really yeah. cool john franco so what's going on john what's yeah. going on well i'll tell you i just gotta call and give you some support again i've been putting the word out a little bit i think this is a great thing you know i mean there's a few shows out there you call up there's no organization people yelling at each other you can't hear what anybody's saying right i think this is a great thing and that the topics you're carrying, you know, you're going into and all. Right. I stayed on the line last week, and I, you guys were talking. I wanted to get in and talk again. I couldn't get to you because <laughs> I was on hold. Well, so well. Street Outlaws thing, you know. Right. Let me uh, let me just you know, let me just say let me just say who you are. You you are a, a class racer, a grudge racer, a racer. Period. And you and your brother are known all over the country. You do what we do. Well, don't, forget, don't forget has been. <laughs> No, no, no. Well, I'm just saying, you know, for the bikes, your brother's tough with the bikes. Everywhere you go with the bikes, I mean, they are, they're, it's a, you mentioned his name, you're not going to get a race. You know, he's known for speed and going fast. But tell us what you have planned as much as you can tell us because of the grudge racing side, we know you're not going to tell us. But what do you have planned for 2015? 
Oh, I'm finally getting my car back out. Like I was telling this guy last week, after 10 years, it's been down. Oh, the Camaro. You know, at that time, it started, yeah, it started going a little too fast for the way it was set. It was certified. Right, right. So they threw me out of the shakedown. Right. And I decided it was time to redo the car. And uh, I mean, at that time, I went like a 740 with the car. I didn't even have a funny car, Halo in it. You know, I had a regular 12 point cage in it, you know. Wow. Okay. And I qualified for shakedown like number 15th. They're waiting for me <laughs> in the return road. They said, uh uh-uh, uh, you're going home. Right. And that's a pretty car, bro. And after that, I cut it up. I should have just got rid of it and started a new one. It's the same car. It's all redone. Right. If you can. The quarters are the only thing the same. If you can, put a picture on um, .com for me so I can put it on our Facebook page. All right. All right. I got it out. I got it out at the end of last season. Uh, I had one, two actual track days with it. So I knew what I had to do over the winter, work to get some bugs out of it. And I got that all done. And I'm just waiting on this weather. Right, yeah. We, we, Every time I get spiked up, it snows again. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been hit hard this winter. It's been a rough one. You're not kidding. Everything around here is soaked. Everything's yeah. a muddy mess. It's, it's just, crazy. it's terrible. I, I, I hate this. I felt, I felt like I was in heaven in Fayetteville. I could imagine. It was 68 degrees. I had on a regular small shirt. And it was bad everywhere. <laughs> like, my, my younger brother, he went to Florida for uh, for the circle track racing. I mean, we would go down there from time to time and race during the, the speed weeks for the dirt circle track stuff. And... You know, he went down there. We weren't racing this year, but he's like, screw this. I'm getting a house and I'm going. I'm going for a week or two. Mm. I'm getting the hell out of here. Went right. down, it was 30. Wow. <laughs> you know, so he, wow. I went down in the middle of February. I was at Disney. It was 39 degrees. Yep. Oh, man. Yep. Mm, mm, mm. All right, John, well, man. Well, look. vacation, I couldn't enjoy myself. <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I uh, again, you know, I was shocked to to see you call, and I, I appreciate the support. And I mean, look, if you can, if you can push us to people and spread the word, that's all we could ever ask for, man. And you know, you're definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this grudge thing. I've been saying all along since the street outlaw thing started, I said, you know, this isn't going to last. No one wants to see street racing glorified. This was an underground thing that it was a part of our, all of our roots, you know, but right. not something that they're going to put on TV like that and make it look like it's legit. People ain't going to stand for it, that's but true. they should be doing it at the track where it is legit, you know, right? And, and and have it realistic instead of, you know, pretending it's going on real and it's not. You know, True. everyone knows what I'm talking about. True. Who knows about this stuff? Because right, and you I couldn't I'm, go out there every week and look know, like that. I, you know, I argue with a lot of guys on Facebook, the class racers that are trying to do the grudge thing, but they don't want to learn it. John, you are one of the dudes that can do all of it and understand and respect each part of it. When you're a grudge racer for cash, that's what you do, and you respect the rules. When you run your class racing and all that, you never try to intertwine the two. So you're a good example. I'll probably be using you in the future to show these class guys that don't understand what we do, how they can do both, but they have to respect each one individually. But they better do exactly. it for some money. There's, there's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a couple of people out here that, that, that are successful at it, but I have to call them. I'm like Crunch, you know. Crunch, one thing you got to say, Crunch knows they know him everywhere. Everywhere you go, they know Crunch. Some like him and some hate him, but no one will ever call him a liar. <laughs> right. You yeah, don't oh, yeah. from anybody. That feels good And to he'll hear. tell somebody how he's feeling. He'll have no problem with that. <laughs> and I'm the same way when it comes to that because right. there's guys on there pretending they're grudge racers and they're class racers. And when they start getting into that stipping stuff, right. and I'm like, yo, you're not built for this grudge thing. Stay in your class racing. It's cool. <laughs> you're, you're good at what you do. Right. True you know, indeed. Don't come on insisting you're a grudge racer and start talking about, well, you've got 904 inches in your car and I've only got 872. Right. No one wants to hear that, you right, know? Right, right, right. Yep. You just say, listen, I can't mess with you, or this is what I need. That's all you do in grudge racing, and you're respected. Either you admit you can do it, or you can't do it. Right. You know, don't pretend or, or give re- excuses, you know what I mean? True. All you're right, so real. I got I got one question for you. Then first off, do you want to go back on hold, or do you want to you want to hang up? What do you want to do when we're done? Well, I'm going to stay on hold. I can't wait two weeks to hear this again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won't be two weeks. We're going to try to have this all this. We're going to try to be caught up by Sunday. But I got to ask you, like, you know, we, all of us here, you know, Crunch and you, obviously much more than myself, but we did do it on the street. What, what brought you off the street? Did you have a wake up moment? Like Crunch had a wake up moment that he's like, damn, you know, this is like, and he, he talked about it a couple times when it was, it was an expensive race. And you're like, what the hell am I yeah. doing? I'm just going through the quarter and just thinking to myself, I only have a six point in here. I know I'm going a certain amount of mile now. This is, I'm never going to race on the street again. That's, I had that. It was, it was just obvious to me. Yep. Yeah. So, so what woke you up, John? What made you decide? Okay, well, look. It was a few track. things. The first thing was the speed. I just, I just always wanted to keep going faster. And there comes a point where anybody with common sense isn't out there doing it anymore. The last car I ran 
I don't know if you remember, it was a green Camaro, my brother's car. Mm -hmm. it, it looked like a little bit of a street car. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it was a 9-0 car. It was a killer. And it had a, a, a regular <laughs> eight-point cage in it, you know? Right, right. And it right. didn't have any power air or nothing like that. Right. And I ran on the street. And once I got going faster than that, I didn't want to be on the street anymore like that. And the True. other thing is, at the same time, I'm having kids and I got a family. And I start thinking about, do I want to, you know, is this what I want to do? Have something happen to me like this and leave my kids with no parent, you know? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, we and, talked you know, about that. Now, being a single father, you think about it even more, you know? True indeed. And the kids change it. You change your life altogether. You know, take a lot yeah, of the risk out and of my it. My kid's older now. He's doing this stuff. But I make sure he's not the one out there. Well, I'm, when he goes out there, I go out there with him. And I keep an eye on him and make sure <laughs> right. I, I get, put the common sense into him. Like I see Crunch. One thing, he raised a great kid. And I watched right. that kid. Oh, I've seen you, him bro. growing up. It's the same thing. You got to instill it in your kids. Don't be stupid. Don't go out there and do dumb stuff, you know? Right, right. Because it's hard to get the racing out of them because that's, that's all they know. They, they grew up watching all of us, and they couldn't wait. He yeah, couldn't right. wait to get his driver's license. I know. Crunch and I have talked yeah. about his kid, and yeah. he's like, oh, man. Truth be told, I used to be out in Jersey in my van. I had one of those custom vans with this little bed in the back. My kid was like two years old, sleeping in the back of the van, <laughs> watching the street races out of the bay window on the side of the van. <laughs> Well, you are a car. You are a car guy. That's why. That's what we do. You bring the whole family out, right? I wasn't going to stay home raising my kid. You know, until I, until I had to be. You know. All right, John. One night he woke up. There was a guy heating the tires in a Mustang, and he woke up in the back of the van. And he goes, "Daddy, what's that guy doing with that Mustang?" And I was like, "Oh man, he's so <laughs> crazy." All right, John. We're going to put you on hold. We got one more caller to grab, and then uh, I think in the next few minutes, according to the text messages I got, uh, our guy Tom is going to call from Dubai, our roving reporter this week. Wow! So, wow. <laughs> but John, again, appreciate it, and uh, you know, man, I, I I can't say thank you enough for trying to get people to listen. I do appreciate it. Oh, we'll do. Okay, guys, keep it up. Great show. Thanks, All man. Right. Thank you, bro. All right. Uh, looks like uh, six three one area code. Name starts with a W. Hello. 631 Mike ends in... William? Yeah, there you go. Might be might be this. Uh, phone number ends in 4388. That's me. All right, man. What's up? What can I do for you? Just listening in, that's all. Oh, okay. How are you? I'm well. You I know me. I this is Billy G. Oh, Billy G. Okay. <laughs> well, Billy G. We didn't know... We, um, we didn't realize the name... So I just gave you props and all that when Bin Laden was on the, on the air. Thank you very much. But I you are actually you are actually the engine builder. At four thirty, but got caught up in things. Oh, okay. You you're the engine builder. You're a driver. You're the tuner. You you just got a lot of jobs, bro. Yeah, I know. It's it's a uh, it's a big hat to wear. <laughs> yeah, you um you impressed us all. You're from the Northeast, but you were down in Fayetteville when I was down there, and you uh you got it in. You raced three times, right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you won two, lost one. Yeah, we didn't go down there yeah. to kick rocks and stamp our feet. True, indeed. True, indeed. So you've been um, you, you've been following me and my ideas, and we've been going back and forth on uh, Small Block Posse for years. And uh, quite I've, a few. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen you. I've seen you work. So you're you're legit. You're official. You're a, a player. I progressed, in this. right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. And you're tough. <laughs> you know, I don't undercut anything. You are tough. And people that play you short. We'll find out soon enough how tough you are. Yeah, you go. Yeah. So now, you had three races this weekend or the, the past weekend? Yeah. Three? In one day. Really? Yeah. That's getting it. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, uh, and he, he, you know, he, he's the man with many hats. Yeah. yeah that's the a lot driver, of the tuner, the, you know. I even saw him trying to negotiate. I'm saying, what, what, how many jobs do you want, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. man. Well, well listen, we, we, had a good we, we definitely he appreciate you listening. Hit pockets. Had had you listened to this before, or did somebody just tell you hippie to call in? I got a little bit of it on the first one, um, but I really haven't been on since. Um, I've just been busy, that's all. Okay. All right, man. No, I mean, look, we, we appreciate everybody who's calling and everybody that's listening, and it uh, makes me glad we got a phone system with enough lines, because it, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. it was kind of surprising there for a minute. Okay. Well, Billy G., <laughs> thanks for calling in, man. I appreciate yeah. it. And I'm gonna give you a little Anytime. shout out. I'm gonna see. I see you on smallblockposse.com because uh, okay, you're, James, you're, thank you. You're pretty busy. Take care out there. All right. You want to go back on hold or yeah? I'm out. All right. See you, buddy. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Well, that's uh, 
That's that's quite a, a surprising uh, Jesus, like four phone calls like that. Yeah, yeah, but from from real people, from, from real people, from real guys that understand and 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 do something in drag racing, regardless of what the niche is, and respect the game. And These that's guys, nice. I yeah. I put the Mixler feed up, you know, just so people live could listen. And you know, it it takes a minute for everything else to get around. And there's a whopping three people listening. Yeah, three. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I hope it. Right. Well, it wouldn't be those guys that are still on hold because if right. they were on hold, they uh, they would be listening on. Right, that. right, right. That's so, cool. That's yeah, cool. Kind of funny. Right. That's really cool. And uh, Tom just texted me. He says he is going to call in. He's going to so, call in. Yeah. Well, do do you want to discuss this little um, thing I had on my mind with the um, big block and small block thing before he calls, or do you want me to wait on it? Well, you might as well get into it. And when Tom right. calls, we we don't want to keep somebody from. Dubai waiting. Right, right. God Especially forbid. a big dog like that from, from yeah. Manly. A big guy like Tom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you had, uh, you had brought that up, and that's a really good point, cause, and it, it goes back to everything that we said years ago. You know, you saw a guy with a big block, what do you have? Maybe 572, you know, then you got into 630s, right. you know. Oh, look, boy, Tom is just impossible, man. We just start to talk, and he just. Uh, he pops in? Yeah, let me okay. bring him in. Hang on a minute. Bring him in. You there, Thomas? I am here. Wow, that's amazingly clear. Yeah, you sound good, bro. What's up, guys? <laughs> what time is it there, buddy? It is uh, 1.08 a.m. here in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates. And, uh, you know, I wish I could have listened to more of the show, but the data rate here is a little bit expensive. So I'm kind of trying to cheap out a little bit but um now wait a minute you're wait 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 you're you're the guy that flew in like a business cabin kind of environment over there and you're gonna get cheap on us for data come on man <laughs> well i'm paying for this oh. <laughs> man I, I saw your pictures on facebook man it looks like you're having fun out there yeah it's pretty it was pretty cool uh you know um i'm sure the audience doesn't know what the hell we're even going to start to talk about but we actually had a uh i'll just explain it now we had an engine battle here where um a team from the uae uh and a team that i chose from the u.s uh, got together and we actually got two trucks which turned into five trucks another long story we'll do this when i get back uh, it, it was crazy and, and when you get back, uh, got to talk about the potential for the for the other solution. And I'm not going to spoil it for people because when you told me that solution, I cracked up because that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Topic. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we get uh, finally we drill down to two trucks. We take the their uh, 13 um, Z71 GMC pickup trucks. We take the stock motors out. Uh, one day in front of the audience, um, a answer questions, blah, blah, blah. It was really cool. Second day, uh, we build, well, not we, I'm, I'm, I run the thing. I'm a judge, which is kind of bizarre, but, um, so they build engines, uh, from scratch, brand new blocks, brand new heads. Um, you know, the thing that the crowd doesn't know is they were pre-assembled, you know, in the shops because obviously we couldn't have machine work done here and that kind of thing, but right. Uh, the, the, the variables were left to the engine builders were camshaft, exhaust system, uh, air box, and that was it. Wow. And the little engine building tricks that they can do. Wow. And they put them together. Uh, actually they went faster than we thought we were slowing them down because we had the shows like eight hours long and they were done in two hours. But then we put the engines back in and, uh, right to the dyno, 10 dyno poles each. And, um, the winner wins both engines mm. so it all went off kind of without a hitch uh the u.s team won they actually made good power on a a really tight dyno dyno dynamics uh they averaged 447 wheel uh and actually had a ma a big pull of a uh, 458 to the other guys like 430. Mm, okay. um, they both d did really well um that's na power on pump gas and this so, was like the other thing they did is it, it was an average of what 10 pulls right 10 pulls yep oh, okay. and l a little sidebar here the american team forgot something and we don't know what it was but it wasn't registering oil pressure at all uh so it was it had to be something high in the motor because it didn't make a sound um it, it actually registered 
oil pressure on the electronic gauge, but it wouldn't with a, a manual gauge. Zero. Now we knew the thing didn't have. It, we knew it had oil pressure because we we did burnouts, we did you know, eighth mile passes. You know, we knew it was working, but there was something going on. And in the end, we were wondering if it was going to blow up or not. So it added some excitement <laughs> to it. And I do know, I do know what got forgotten. Now, uh, the engine builder doesn't, but his assistant and I know. So we are going to make a big deal about it when we get back, um, oh, because wow. right after. The, Right after the show, I know I'm talking a lot, but right after the show, everybody wanted to buy the motor. Like, literally, we're on stage. And when you guys see the production of this, I mean, I have video, I have all kind of stuff, but um, it was really, it, it was like a, a huge attraction. Uh, and they announced a winner, they announced the power, and literally, the guy who ran the show walked over to me and said, how much do you want for the motor? Mm. And I was like, no, we, we can't sell it, you know. <laughs> not yet but and not yet <laughs> but anyway so right. ha- enough about me uh travel in the world how are you guys it's all right it's, uh i think it's a little warmer there than here it's not terrible here today it's all right yeah, but uh i don't even know how many degrees it is today i don't know but it ain't, ain't as cold as it was oh, oh, oh is this a car show and you guys are talking about weather well you asked how we're doing and what the hell is going to be going on over here it is still kind of winter ain't nobody racing anything in this area <laughs> that's <laughs> true I, I did forget about that. We had, we had some callers on, and we had some great uh, conversations so far, Tom. Yeah, I heard the one. I heard I heard the one guy, and I guess he's one of the founders of Small Block Posse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rich Bach. Yep. and uh, Not so broke. So that's cool. Yep, yeah. John Franco called. Uh, I guess, what's what's the guy's name? I don't want to get it wrong here. The, Billy, Billy G. Billy G. And I guess, who's the other guy? Uh, is a car owner? Um. Yeah. Okay, yep. yeah. So, I mean... That w- that was nice. I mean, you know, we had you know four calls in short succession. One or two people have called and hung up because I guess they're a little too impatient. <laughs> well, they might they might have went to the feet. Maybe. Well, no, because well, we we're up to four. Now we're back down to three. Yeah, went to the <laughs> so, feed. on on the feed. Yeah, on the, on the feed. Some people are actually listening. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. No. And well, yeah, now it's down I to two. I guess I pissed one of the guys off. To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike, take it easy, homie. Take it easy. All right. He's but back. Tom. Tom. Has he been good? Yeah, he's been good. He hasn't said anything on the list, you know, that I had to uh, make a remark about. But um, Alan went to Las Vegas. Alan did? Yeah, he went to Las Vegas on us. I I texted him this morning. I said, hey, we have a radio show. He said, "Uh, I'll be in Las Vegas. I said to myself, "Uh, how do you go to Las Vegas and you don't tell everybody? I I didn't see. I know know he was going somewhere. And I know... I know he wanted to go back there because we had talked about it a few times because right. I, I end up there like, uh, I don't know, three or four times a year for right. various trade well, he shows. Well, he was just in, where was he at just recently? Wisconsin. Wisconsin to Las Vegas? Oh, yeah. this, this this is not your average engineer. No. <laughs> but <laughs> Las exactly Vegas. Typical Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas should be pretty nice. This uh, it, it, It's better. It's still not like, because the, the past couple of times we were there in April, um, one of the times we went to the Grand Canyon and it, it was, it was colder in the afternoon. Like we were walking around and shit. Cause we went to the Indian side. That's fucked up. That's a whole nother podcast for some other. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> messed up. Is I'm that, not, is that the F bomb you just things. used? Probably. Okay. I think the F bomb is on the list. Uh, well, I mean, the, the, I think the people that are listening to this should be mature enough. to handle <laughs> Tom, do you hear this? You, you, I know, man. I know what you're up against. I, I, I hear you. I feel your pain. But you, you did the one thing you did miss is I did hate on Utah because we've got decent downloads. I mean, I guess you know the northwestern states. It, look, it's colder. I think. I think Tom. I think you said the people there race like trucks and tractors and stuff. Yeah. Well, so when we start doing tractor pull podcasts, we <laughs> might get some people from Utah and Montana. Well, we. But I wouldn't worry about we've hit we've hit everybody like every state has downloaded something um many of them are either approaching or over a thousand so that that's right. really nice and but utah was a big zero still a big zero i just looked before on my phone still zero not one let it go michael i know let it go, crunch. <laughs> let it go. I'm, I'm i'm convinced we need to when we get that one that's a special person yeah 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 Either I mean, that or if we don't get one, we're going to have to go out there and do a live show. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I actually had to sit there 
and think about it. Is there anything that I would have said that maybe people like that already got a bad rap somewhere and I don't know about it? Like, I mean, if I would have offended, but I did never talk bad about Mormons or any shit like that. And yeah, but Utah, that's a big state. Yeah, you know, and I got to think back over zero, the, Mike, zero, zero. Now, not we, one. No, we did. We had some customers like in Idaho, uh, Cordialine, I think is the way you say it. Idaho had a customer there, um, but I don't think I ever had. I'll tell you this. <laughs> what I'm involved with right now, the right. electronics, a mm -hmm. lot of people from Utah. I right. get phone calls okay. from Utah all day long. It seems like a very big tech area right, right where these people But when people it comes are. to power and speed, no, we I, have zilch. Nothing. Zero. Not one. Not one. All right. Let it go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. <laughs> oh, man. It's gonna be okay. I don't know if I should be offended or I don't know. All right. So when are you coming back, Thomas? This is advice. Uh, well, tomorrow uh, actually is going to be pretty cool. Um, going to Ferrari, uh, I've been I've been to Yas Marina Circuit twice, which is the premier drag racing facility uh, here at least. But it is it's rumored to be the best drag racing surface on the planet. Um, wow! And why is that? It's it's a continuous concrete half mile, you know, quarter mile track with a, a you know a quarter mile or more of of shutoff. Wow! No joints. They've poured it on rubber. And apparently when it was finished, they rolled two bowling balls down the track and they made it from one end to the other without veering in, in, uh, you know, veering off the track. Wow. It's an amazing, it's literally, it's the most amazing place. Um, I mean, I've seen the track in Bahrain. Um, uh, I've seen the track in, in, uh, in Dubai. It's just a, a, a road race, you know, a grand prix course. This track is crazy. I was there twice. I have a lot of pictures, but, mm. but anyway, Moral of the story, there's a place called Ferrari World in Yas Marina. Uh, it's, a, it's an amusement park uh, owned by Ferrari. So, every, I mean, they have go-karts that are, look like Ferrari F1 cars. They have a roller coaster that uh, goes 235 kilometers an hour, which is 100 and... I'm just doing a math Fast. in my head. Fast. If, if, if Alan was here, we would right. help us. But I think it's like 160. Right. Uh, and, and the car, and, you know, the roller coaster cars look like Ferraris, and there's all kind of gear and everything. So we're doing that like a bunch of big kids. Uh, then we're going to Dubai. We're going to be downtown, uh, staying in a hotel that's connected to the Burj Khalifa, which is that tallest building in the world where mm -hmm. they, they just let, launched that eagle. Oh, yeah. And we're going to go out on one of the, the Palm Islands, and, you know, we're going to be tourists tomorrow. And then Monday uh, noon, I get back on the plane and fly home. Yeah, you're a dick. I would have liked to do all that. Yeah, nice guy. <laughs> I think Dick is on the list. I don't care. He's a dick. I, it's, it sounds. I, I've never seen a place like that, but it sure sounds nice. Now on that on that drag strip, that's so perfect. I mean, the one thing that I guess they have there that we wouldn't have in in our area of the United States is they don't really have any kind of massive climate swing, do they? No. Well, yeah. They. I mean, they do. It, it goes from hot to oh my god. Yeah, but I mean, we don't we don't go from hot to frozen balls you know it doesn't get that bad right no 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 they wow. no they go from uh you know 75 um it's been like 75 to 85 here really nice little breeze uh and in the in the heat of the summer they get to uh 55 celsius so or now like 50 celsius 130 hmm. uh to the point where they don't work during the day like construction and stuff they do it at night with lights and 130 yeah it gets warm here yeah <laughs> i remember a day of like 101 before and it was like no no i couldn't yeah, really. wow 130 well, you know michael i'm gonna tell you right now you know i have to choose the the engine battle uh engine builder for next year and you know you've You've said many times to me in private that you're never going to build an engine again or something like that, or you'd never be in the business. But let, let me ask you a question. If, if I committed to building a motor, would I actually have to go through with it when I got there? <laughs> Could I bow out and then no, just vacation? I, no, no, you, no, no. A week before, you could just say, hey, Tom, just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't say it a week before. I'd say it after we got off the plane. So, you know, by the way, I've decided I don't want to get dirty. I, I, I can't do this. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. nah, I mean, it, it you, uh, the Mike true be name, the true be name is better than that. We know you go out there and kick butt now. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Sadly though, you, you couldn't do it anyway, no. because not that you couldn't, because in a year, I'm sure you probably could, 
you'd have to have a tuner team meet with you because next year we're doing LS ones uh, with some kind of power adder, you know, a yeah. motor or a supercharger. They're gonna be Probably going to be a supercharger. They're going to be making real power. But it, yeah, well, not only that, it's going to have to be right because the guy, you know, the guy that lost was close. He, the only reason he lost, well, not the only reason he lost because his average numbers weren't going to be good, weren't going to be good enough anyway. Our our guy was just. I knew he was going to be better right from jump because he's so experienced, but wow. um, you would need that experience because the, the first pull on this thing was the most important one, you know, because you're averaging 10, unless you blow up his first pull was 400. Uh, the U S team's first pull was 422, And then it went up from there. So, you know, when you have that kind of swing right from jump, right. You know, like if you were bored or run, you lose, if you were bored or run at any time, you would lose. Yeah. So okay. that 22 horsepower swing um, would have made the difference wow. if my guy was close, but he wasn't close anyway. That you know he he had a like I said before a, a top pull of 458 to right. like 437 or something like that. Right. So now you see if these guys wanted to do like a two barrel sportsman bridgeport speedway new Egypt speedway motor i i got him <laughs> i'm ready you, you know what happens that so you, this you can't forget what you know no the the, the stuff that i know but you know the, when the shit when you get behind and stuff mm -hmm. and i mean like i said before i i have tuning stuff for my corvettes and i've plugged them in and looked at them and said yeah i kind of get it i'm like yeah. it's good enough <laughs> I mean, I yeah. think the only thing I did is I turned off torque management in the one yellow one, the other, the new yellow one I'm afraid to fuck with because when the motor blew up in that thing, is that an F bomb? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's yeah. That, when, when a motor blew up in that one, the crunch. They, yeah, you're stuck with me. You, I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> they actually sent a guy that goes and he plugs into the car to make sure that the tune wasn't taken out, put back in, that anything that was done was only done by a GM, I guess. Tech. Yeah. Wow. So they can check, they can tell now. Yep. So, oh, yep. so the days of bringing the car back and just saying, I don't know what happened. Those days are over. I would try the cell phone trick. Like I told Tom about, like when something goes wrong, you microwave the component and then they have no idea what happened. You know, say, so look, it blew up, but I don't know where the stuff is stored. I mean, it'd be pretty easy if you brought the car back and the whole computer's <laughs> toast and they're like, what happened? And why does it smell like popcorn? You, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I was thinking about that, but who who even thinks like that? I do. Oh, okay. Sure, he I, does. He does. Yeah. Edge builders, man, are crafty. I bring the whole Corvette back with the nitrous bottles in it and everything, and say, "Listen, man, she won't take the juice." <laughs> yeah. Well, that like I said, the motor. I lost the motor in that thing. Wow. Um, at thirty something hundred miles. So I'm glad I didn't fuck with it. Right. Real glad because they right. would they would have said, "Look, you're screwed." Even if I did something. Right. That it meant nothing. I got you. I got you. They look for a reason. True. All right. Well, listen, guys, it, it's 124 here. I got to sleep because I got a Sissy. long day tomorrow. And All right. Here, right? I have, we're going to, you know, we'll have plenty more material uh, from this trip. Believe me, I got a lot more. All yeah. right. Good. Um, do you have, do you have, do you have women walking around throwing rose petals in front of you and stuff like that? No, nah, bro. It's no. Not like that. Okay. Yeah. I was just checking. Just a regular guy. Are there any no, hot women over there? Guy. Like, are, are, like I mean, I, like see, because I'm not, I'm not culturally aware. Yeah, but you know? he, they might not bring the hot women to the no, but I, I the engine contest. I don't know, but do the hot women have like shit over their heads and their face and everything? Is it like that kind of place, or is it more modernized? Yeah, they do. It's a very, it, no, it's a very respectful place. Right, uh, right, right. I'd want to know if they had g strings and shit on in there. Oh right? lord, Tom, uh, Tom, oh yeah, lord, it, yeah. I'm gonna, Holy I gotta smokes! So I can get out of it. <laughs> they're, they're probably listening to this. Oh, Wonderful. Man. Well, no offense. I, I like, I like women. I'm sure they do too. The hell with them. They just they just can't look at them the way we do. Mm. We're pigs. Mm. All right, Thomas. Well, thank you for calling. I'm I'm glad we got to shake out the high resolution calling part. That worked good. Um, yep. You sound yep. great. So yeah, you sound great. That's cool. a long distance. Hell yeah. We you know I I, I do want to say one thing uh, mm -hmm. to all the fans out there. Uh, this has to be the one of the you know best and highly technical podcasts out there because we're talking live right now from 8,000 miles away and apparently sounding pretty good. Yeah. And I want to point out, we're not using Skype. You know, we're not, we're not some guy with a laptop with a microphone cable plugged in with a snowball. <laughs> you know I mean? It's we're, we're trying to do it right. <laughs> trying to do it right. Wow. So from the UAE to the, to the United States, uh, I will bid you guys farewell for now. And, uh, I hope you have a uh, good show and Mike, get it to me as soon as you can. I'll listen to it on the plane on Monday. Yeah, no, I'll get it. Uh, I'll get it up to post pretty quick. All right, Thomas, take it easy, man. All right, bro. Safe All trip right, back. Guys. See ya. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. All right.
That was pretty cool. It worked good. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty good. Sounds like he's in the next room. Yeah, that's because that's a that's a different level. That's not it's not like a regular phone call. Right. I got that's, oh yeah, you put that thing on your phone, but we didn't get to use it the other day. Yeah, mine mine is a little maybe my phone is just outdated. I, I it's it's just touchy. Everything's gotta be kind of right. And right. yeah. Like we don't want border people with that crap. <laughs> well, we were discussing um the big block and small block stuff. Yep. yep. And the problem going on in the grudge racing scene now is the big block guys don't want to spot the small block guys because they're claiming the small blocks are bigger than usual and shouldn't be declared small blocks. Well, well, we talked about all this, and I started to say it before Tom so rudely interrupted. Um, <laughs> we, um, when when we were racing, you would look at a big small block and you'd think maybe four thirty, maybe maybe four thirty four. You know, one of the the sizes of stroke combinations, right? I mean, that's kind of what you had in your head. And you looked at a big block and you said, okay, 572, then it was 632 and right. say, okay, that's kind of about where we are. Well, all that shit's gone. Right. I remember when 706 was humongous. Yep. So, you know, in all fairness, if the big blocks are just climbing in cubic inch, then of course the small blocks should. But if you have a, for me, this is just my opinion. I'm only, you know, crunch the grudge racer from New Jersey, but under 500 inches can be a small block. Anything over 500 inches, I can't imagine it being a small block because there are a lot of big block features on that small block. Well, I mean, all that stuff I remember, and they, these are just the funny stories that probably all the car guys out there can relate to. And I never, I never told you this. This is, a, this is a pretty good story. But this falls right back into when shit changes and everybody's not aware of what can really be done. Right. You know, if, if you weren't as up on this as you were and somebody says, well, I got a big block, you know. Mm-hmm. You just, you, your brain would kind of snap to, okay, you know, 600 inch, maybe, maybe five, seven. but you know, now that things have progressed so far, right. same thing used to happen back in the day. I remember in auto shop, my auto shop teacher, Mr. Kowalczyk, he's, he's gone. Right. He's, he, he passed, yep. Passed away. Good dude. Um, he says to me, one of my friends came in a, into the classroom. He said, you're not going to believe this. He's got no timing cover on his car. And the guy says, has to have a timing cover. There's no way it's a Chevy. And the guy's like, yeah, he's like, it has to have a timing cover. Nothing will keep the oil in. But what happened is, is because my father was involved with Jessel and the belt drive and the, you know, when the belt drive started to come out, you know, right. I mean, my father had a lot to do with that. Okay. So I got a belt drive to kind of see if I could break it because I broke everything else. Right. Rears, trans, every, if it broke, I, if it, you, I could break it. Right. So I drove the thing to the, to the school. And Mr. Kowalczyk bet me 20 bucks that I had a timing cover. No cover. <laughs> it was right there out in the open. And then that led into other arguments. We were talking about some of the motors we did. And I said, well, you know, my dad's got one down there that's got Buick heads on a, on a small block Chevy. In case you can't do that because it's just what people don't know because right. that's when, yeah. but that's when shit changed that. Like if somebody had to put a, a, a stamp on it and right. said, when did stuff get really different that kind of what you knew went out the window. Right. As soon as we went away from conventional port iron or aluminum cylinder heads, and into this, that's when everything changed. Right. I got you. I mean, back then, pro stock heads were, you know, regular big block Chevy heads altered. You know, Rear Marston used to weld big plates on them and roll them and all kinds of stuff. Million dollars worth of work and shit heads. And then all of a sudden, big chiefs. And then we're gotcha. off to the races. Got gotcha. you. That's I understand. what happened. I understand. So going back to your guys, mm-hmm. um, if you got a big block, this is, this is where the mastery of a race setup comes in. Mm-hmm. Because... I have not personally ever seen a 900 inch big block, never looked at one, Right. but I would imagine it's got to be pretty evident by bore spacing and everything about it that when you look at it, right. that's not, you know, a, a big block Chevy that came out of a truck. Right. You can't hide it. Right. Basically. And I used to walk through a uh, Sonny shop, Sonny Leonard racing engines. And I walked through the shop and just look at, you know, they're building the blocks in the shop. Right. CNC machines are building heads. CNC machines are building the blocks. And these blocks are like big chunks of aluminum. They look like the front end of a car. Yep. And, um, you know, I understand the philosophy behind it because certain people will take the technology and apply it to a small block and it'll end up with big block features and still be called a small block. But for a guy like me, right? I really just, I just really don't respect someone saying that that's a small block over 500 inches. See, th- things have gotten so complex from, from the, perspective of looking at a given motor and trying to to figure out how much power it really could make right i mean that's uh, what the ls the ls motors are fool you yeah they they messed everybody up too yeah the I ls mean, motors fool a lot of people 
Yeah. A, a lot of people. And, you know, so, I mean, from a, from a street racing perspective, it makes it much harder to set up a race. You better have a lot on a ball <laughs> because, and I mean, I, I remember like in, right, in Newark, right, there were right. things that people would bring down there, like a supercharged Mustang. And then people would start to realize how fast they could go. And there'd be good guys with good cars. So I'm not messing with that. Because right. cause they it was a big question mark. Yeah, it was it was knowledge too. A lot of guys that had the, the knowledge in that area, they knew the power potential, so they weren't going to go against it, knowing the power potential. Yeah, and you, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to stipulate? You know, I mean, the only things you could do were like the the craft, the how things races used to get set up, stock, right. stock configuration block. You know, true. But then, what are you going to do? You're going to have to tear down. You know, you're going to take a head off. You're going to, you know, I mean, it's it's tough. It's real tough. And I mean, the, you could get, what, what are the sizes of the LS ones? I mean, I know that like me just looking, you get that block from RHS. I think those things could be 500 inches. Can't they? I'm pretty sure. Man, I, I don't do a lot of research on them because I don't plan to face them. And when I, they're in front of me, I just start with, I need a spot. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where I start. And the guy's looking at me like, how can you say that? And I'm like, I don't care if yours is just a slow version I need a spot. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they get tired of me. I think from a racing perspective, you always got to start where you need a spot. It doesn't matter how much faster you are than a guy, you need a spot. Why yeah. make why make it any harder than you got it? This, this is 2015, and it's just amazing the progression of technology in the past 20 years, Mike. Yeah, I mean, think. It's look, crazy. Look, go back to, to the times, like not even back to when we street raced, but look at a guy now like Anthony DeSoma. He ran really well you know, the past weekend, you right. know, because this was the way that everything falls when we record and how we do everything, you know, we can't necessarily talk about everything live, how it happens, but right. I mean, the guy ran great. Yeah. And I mean, that's turbocharged electronics. I mean, that kind of shit just wasn't around. I mean, that's, yeah. and to be able to run and I want to point out also be a little bit handicapped from what they would really like to do. They have turbocharger size limits. They have all kinds of stuff because right. they're, now why don't, why don't they let those guys just go balls to the wall? <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'd like to get Anthony on here to talk about that because right. there was some controversy over him going fast. Right. Um, it sounds to me like there there used to be mechanisms in place in comp and in super stock that if you went too fast, you'd either hit the class, you could CIC, they'd, they'd do something to change the index of the class. And right. sometimes it would be, it would be for an event or it would be a permanent. And so, you know, basically what they're saying is, but the, again, this, at, at my core right. bothers me. Right. Cause if I could get a car like Anthony's and I knew I could put down, you know, not a 76, I could put down a 50. I'm coming off the trailer and I'm going 50. I'm going <laughs> as deal, fast and as you'll deal with the aftermath later. Yep. And right. well, you know, maybe, maybe they're trying to avoid like a buddy Ingersoll situation. You remember that back yeah. in the day with that grand national? Yep. And he was going with one turbo, mm -hmm. six cylinder. Bottom sevens. What year was that? 85? Yeah. Yeah. So these guys with twin turbos, 700 inches. I mean, I, what, I know. what are you really doing? But I guess they are restricting them. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's not, I don't think it's widely talked about that they, and I mean, I don't, I'm not going to blow Anthony's spot up or nothing. I'm not right. going to, not going to say that, you know, anything went horribly wrong. And I'm not going to tell you that, look, Anthony's a drag racer. He's going to go as fast as he can. Right. And if he needs, look, how fast do you need to go? fast enough to win. That's right. it. True. He went fast enough to qualify number one. Right. If, if somebody says, you know, be careful how fast you're going, cause it might affect the class. Um, that's to me when all bets are off. Cause yeah. if I'm not number one, I'm going to number one if I can. Right. And it's going to be on kill until I get there. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big can of worms. Yeah. Boy. That's just, I don't know. You know, when you're, when you're a real racer, that's kind of how you do it. Yeah, so it's yeah. Well, it's frustrating. But I think he'll be back. He called me when he got back, and I was like, "Dude, what happened?" You oh, know. Okay. So I, we want to hear that. Yeah, I I honestly said it was a uh, Motor Mania TV. I think is what it was called, and Motor Mania TV was uh, like they they had like it's not bad. It's they use like live stream or you stream something that that gives you the live event, and the video's not terrible. Right. But you're. You're kind of locked into their views, what they show. The, they might have a different camera view here or there. But finally, like, I'm watching it, and I'm in here, and I was working on some audio for something else. And mm -hmm. I see I see Anthony come up, like, oh, great. You know, and then I see him come up. And, I mean, I was on the edge of my friggin' seat watching this. And then wow. he launched, and the thing just didn't go nowhere, and he just shut off. And it looks like whatever happened was electrical. It wasn't right. mechanical failure. Right. Um, right. Dropped one cylinder, wouldn't spool at the line. Mm -hmm. And he put it up and he stayed out as long as he could before he thought he was going to time out. 
bumped it in, and he figured, I'm just going to let the button go. If it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It didn't. Okay. <laughs> but he still set the record, so that that's good. It means the potential's there. Yeah. Well, so. stuff happens. There's another word, but stuff happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know, boy, you really want to sanitize me, don't you? No, no, I'm saying I'm not going to say it. I'm trying to get rid of the cursing and all that for the kids, you know, and I, I don't want to say shit happens. No, but shit. Stuff shit, happens. Shit does happen. <laughs> <laughs> stuff happens. And it sucks. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, I mean, anything else you want to hit for today? Um, I was hoping my friend would call in. Uh, that would be Steph, the the biggest DP man on the Northeast right now for all the graduation. He's uh, very trustworthy and uh, knowledgeable on the, what we do. And uh, I was hoping he would call in, but he's a, he has a business, so he runs his business. He told yeah. me he might be a little busy. Yeah. But I want the people to hear from a DP man, you know, why it's important to have a DP man, which is the arbitrary person between two people, to make the decisions that most people wouldn't make or don't want you to make because so he, it, it, it affects the money. He'd be the neutral party that you both He'd be the neutral to. party, correct. Yeah. And the DP man is very, very important. You know, he has to know the ins and outs because... And that that's important to note. That's not just street racing. That's right. street racing. That's grudge racing. That's right. kind of how it works. Somebody right. holds the money. And right. then you're like the escrow provider. You right. you take the money and then, you know, look, this is the decision. So <laughs> this guy gets the money. True indeed. So that's a very integral part of the, the decision. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these guys, I hear them, they're calling the DPs over the phone. They're calling the DPs over the radio stations. And um, they, they alleviate the DP, man, not realizing that once you get there, now it's him versus him or this person versus that person with no media, no middleman and, and mediator. Right. So um, we'll, we'll definitely touch upon that when we, have, we can get our hands on them. Well, look, we want we want everybody to call in. Um, you know, it was great that we had callers today already. You know, kind of the first day that we were really pushing for it. Right, and right. you know, we'll try to we'll try to get you know better timing so that everybody knows when they can call in. And you know, certainly whatever you want to talk about. And I, I posted on Facebook if you want to abuse us, whatever. I don't give a shit. You know, call. <laughs> well, we're not, I'm not taking any abuse now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, but I mean, it, c- constructive criticism. I don't mind it, even if you don't like my style, because I, I know. I'm a very, you know, I'm a very unique individual and, you know, I know I'm genuine. Yeah. So I don't, you know, it doesn't mean people have to like me. No, no, I understand. So I can take, I can take the criticism. I can take the, the antagonistic stuff, whatever, but you're not going to dog me out. <laughs> this is our own show. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. So again, you know, anybody, whenever they want to call in, uh, 908-751-0211. And, uh, I guess that's it. We're out. All right. And, uh, and we'll be back next week. And, until next time. Yep. And I'll, we'll get the audio published up as soon as possible. And hopefully we'll get back on a, on a good schedule. So, all right, all right man, everybody, thanks for listening. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>